grab your cuppa. Tea time with Jen. Some ramblings. Thoughts and ramblings. My message for Princess Kate and anyone else who's shell-shocked to experience this, join this community of cancer survivors. All right, so the first few are specific to Miss Kate, Princess Kate. Um, the first one is that I would commend her for her bravery in sharing her story to the level that she felt comfortable with, which I know sounds kind of ridiculous coming from me since I just come out here and blab all my stuff all the time. But there are many who would prefer to uh, be private and... Um, anonymous uh, and do their fighting quietly. Um, not to say that they're not as invested as any of the rest of us, but they would like to keep it quiet to themselves or with their family and their support group. And that's it. And I don't know what type of person princess Kate is, if she would have preferred that or not, but I am angry on her behalf that that choice was taken away from her, that there were enough people that would nose into her business and who were already, um, putting out hypotheses and reasons why she wasn't public and what was going on that pushed her into the position that she felt obligated to share with us. That is nobody's business but hers and her family. And we shouldn't have the ability as a community or society to push somebody to share information that's theirs. That's just not right. And that makes me angry for her. But I do commend her for her bravery, bravery for composing her thoughts in, in such a succinct and clear way, letting us know what was going on as well as um, what she needed from us and didn't need from us. So again, kudos. <clears throat> and I guess that could apply to any number of people um, in a somewhat public eye or even, you know, a teacher might need to tell her students, you know, those kinds of things. You don't necessarily want to do that, but you're kind of forced into it. So again, I commend you. The next thing I would commend her for is putting her family first. She was very clear in, in, her, in her story when she shared her story that they, they've spent a good deal of time with her body healing, but in addition, preparing her children for what was to come explaining the diagnosis in a way that they could understand and, and, and probably the symptoms that she was going to have. Um, and I guess I can talk about this a little bit. Um, based on the story that she shared, our stories are quite similar. My first cancer was about the same age as she is. It was an abdominal surgery that we didn't have any belief was malignant. And then we found out post-surgery that it was. And I had a young family. And so, A, the cancer was nowhere on my radar. Like, I knew what it was, but it, there was no expectation. There was no one in my life that had, in my, in my family, that had young, young people that had cancer. And so, there was no expectation. And I say young, we were mid-30s, but that's young. <laughs> um, and, you know, you see the St. Jude commercials, but there was no one in our family, in my immediate circle, that had these issues. And so, it was not in my you know, it wasn't even a realm of possibility that it was something could be, right? It, my reality was changed that day when they told me that I had cancer. And I can imagine it was the same thing for Princess Kate and many others. Um, and it's hard not to be bitter and upset and angry about the disruption in your world view, your reality view. Um, and beyond that, how do you manage your household and keep things going? Um, it was a lot right? It was a lot. And you depend heavily on your people, on your spouse, because they're going to be single parenting to some extent. Be on your spouse because you need them to support you. That's your main person. That's your person. And, um, and then on your family, your extended family and friends, you need help with your children. You need help just to get around. You need help to run your household. Um, I'm sure Princess Kate has got all that help plus some extra, but it's still a very difficult time. And so I do commend her for putting her family first. It was absolutely the right thing that she should spend the time working with her children and helping them to understand what was coming. Uh, mommy's going to be tired or sleepy or nauseous or going to be very susceptible to germs and you're going to have to come in and wash your hands first before you hug mommy, just like when the new babies come and those kinds of things. Those were the conversations we were having with our children. We had to put it in a way 
um, that they could understand. I don't remember, I think we did not use the word cancer, but we did let them know that I was sick and that the medicine the doctors were going to give me was going to make me sicker, <laughs> which didn't make any sense, of course, but you know, those kinds of things, but you have to speak to them at a level and in a way that they understand. And uh, again, I commend her for that. And nowadays, um, there are many books to look on Amazon for every type of flavor, um, find the one that you like and that is appropriate to you, but that you could tell the story to your children, uh, in a storybook form that helps them to understand it. So it might become part of their, you know, their vernacular. Okay. So the next one, the next thing I would tell her is the same as what I would tell anyone in my day-to-day -day life or here. Um, <clears throat> and you just found out, I'm like, Oh, cancer sucks. And I'm so sorry you're going through this. I don't have any words, magic words to make you feel better. Um, is there anything I can do to help you? If you want to talk about something, if you have a question, you know, of course, go to your medical team, but if there's something I can help as a, as a survivor, please let me know. I'm happy to talk about anything, share my experience in any way that would help you and talk to anybody on your behalf if you would like. <clears throat> but again, Yep, this really stinks. This is horrible. I'm really sorry that you're going through this. And then I guess the next thing I would do, and I, this is a hard one. I know I've spoken about this before, so I'm going to talk about it again. And this is my personal belief, and I don't have anything to back it up besides my personal belief and my anecdotal experience of four-time cancer survivor, which is, um, adjust your attitude. So, uh, you know, I'm a big proponent of the pity party. I'll link that above. Um, and I believe wholeheartedly that you should have your feels, your feelings, get them, get through them. But then you need to focus on believing in your medical team, advocating for yourself, have help. Uh, if you need help, get your family and friends to help you advocate for yourself. Right. Um, and believe in yourself, believe in your body and the medication's ability to fight this thing. Whatever your percentage is, there's always a positive percentage, right? Do you understand what I'm saying? So whatever diagnosis you've gotten, if the doctor's given you a percentage, you have a 90% chance of survival. You have an 80% chance of survival. You might have a 30% chance of survival. There are not good ones out there. I know that. Um, whatever that percentage is, I think in your heart, you need to believe that you can be part of that percentage, the positive percentage, I'll call it the positive percentage. And you need to believe that your body can do the work that needs to get done and that you're, that's what you need to focus on. So I guess what I'm saying is in your heart, in your, in your mind, you need to believe you can do this. You can kick this cancer's butt to the curb. Now that is not to sit in. And I guess I would like to caveat that. If you're unable to do that, if you do your best, you have that in your heart, but it becomes evident as time goes on that you are not going to be in that positive percentage, you have done zero wrong. And your medical team, hopefully, has done nothing wrong. Um, my only point here is that I believe that your perspective and approach does have some weight, some weight in, your, in your success. Um, not all, and there are, will be cancers. I know there are bad ones out there that you can't beat, but, um, that attitude can take you far or farther than no attitude, right? If I just crumble up and cry in my bed, A, I'm not living. So I'm not, I'm not getting the time that I have. I'm not using it. And B, I didn't get a chance. You didn't give your body a chance to do what it had to do. Right. And so I guess I would say to anyone you can do this. I believe in you. Your body can do it. Your medical team can do it. If you're going to fight, fight. You got this. And when you don't, we still believe in you. You did the thing. You lived X days beyond. You, you did it. You did the thing. So I guess that's one, one thing. The next thing I would say to Princess Kate and anyone is to join a community. Now, I'm, it's kind of, this is a little funkadoo. Because I personally have never joined a support group in my local community. We're 
many of us are pretty fortunate to live in suburban metropolitan areas that have many support groups. And that's the case for me. All of my doctors uh, notify me with support groups that I can join for various things, for eating, for exercise, for just being a breast cancer survivor, for being any kind of cancer survivor. Um, for uh, I'm trying to think. There's all kinds of stuff. For hair loss, for this, for that. There's many, many, many um, support groups available to me. And I've never once taken advantage of any of them. <laughs> and here I am telling you to find your community. And I would say if the support group path is something that is good for you, that resonates with you, um, for me, I always struggle to go someplace and take. If I go and give, I'm okay with that. And I've been considering recently joining a support group in the giving sense. But um, we'll see. We'll see where that goes. But the community I'm talking about is actually here in the socials. So for Miss Princess Kate and others I, um, that need to, I would say grab an email address anonymously that doesn't necessarily identify you as yourself and jump onto YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. There are many, many channels out there of folks that are sharing their stories. And you may or may not want to hear the story, but the thing to do is to listen to the comments. Get in those comments. Ask questions if you have questions about what's going on with you. You know, some people can share or not share their own personal experiences. I'm also always careful to caveat that these are my experiences and I'm not a medical professional, but I'm happy to share. And there are many like me out there who are sharing, but there are also many like you who are uh, in the comments section, sharing your, you know, sharing a comment and then asking a question or just sharing their story. And there is something to be said for that sense of community. Um, as much support as we get for our, our loved ones, our family, and our friends, um, they've not necessarily been through this journey and they don't have the experience that, to support us wholeheartedly, support us in that way. And then I guess the last thing I would say is to give yourself grace. Your body is fighting cancer, which is, which is an attack. And then beyond that, you're fighting the effects of the medic medication, the chemotherapy, which is essentially poison to that cancer, but to many other parts of your body. And so the healing from that takes a lot of effort. You're going to be tired. You're going to be nauseous. You're not going to feel yourself. You might not be able to taste well, so you might not be able to eat properly. Depending on um, where your cancer is or what your treatment is, your throat might be yucky, right? So it might be hard to swallow or it might, you know, there's all kinds of obstacles. You might have issues bathrooming. Um, toileting, I think would be a little more well of a limited way to say that, particularly if you've had some type of abdominal um, surgery or issues. Um, so all these things factor into how you're feeling. Um, we as a human race take our good health for granted. And so we just assume that our body's going to be there to support us when we want it there. And this is a case where it's not, it's kind of be kind of busy trying to heal you up. And so we need to give ourselves grace. And that means naps. And that means, um, a, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking forward to Nad? An A word. That means adjusting. Nope. Advocating. Nope. Accommodating. There it is. That means accommodating. Um, I, I encourage you to still live, but you know, where you might've been out in the backyard running around with your kids and playing, maybe for a while you have to sit on a bench and be in the middle of the play, but not as active. Or you're sitting on the bench throwing the ball instead of standing and running and retrieving and doing all the things. Or standing, sitting on the bench to play Frisbee or, you know, all the things. And it's hard. It's hard to be less active and it's hard. But I think giving yourself grace allows your body to heal and get you that much closer to living that life that you want. And I guess finally, I guess my final piece of advice for any person is to make sure to make time to live. And I think that's been my message fairly consistently here, but sometimes we get wrapped up in the survival of it, the treatment, the doctor's appointments, the way I, how I'm feeling so miserable and everything else. 
but there really honestly is no point in doing all that if you don't do the work to live. And so it might mean that maybe once a month you can go out to be with your friends or have your friends in to visit with you or whatever the thing is, but make sure you make time to do the things that bring you joy. Spend the time with your family. With, um, with my first cancer, I can still remember that abdominal cancer I talked about earlier. We had a single a twin bed in the back of my family room. <laughs> my kids were still young and playing, you know, on the carpets and everything. But I, even when I had to nap, I would nap in the room with the kids. I didn't just go up to, you know, be, be in a secret space and be sick by myself because I wanted to be part of their lives. So when I was awake, I could see them. I could interact with them. They could climb on the bed with me. And when I was sleeping, they could do their business and there were other adults watching them. But I wanted to be part of their life. I didn't want to just be shuttled off to a, a corner, right? So find ways to do that. All right. I'm sorry that you're going through this. If there's anything I can do to help, let me know. You, I believe in you. You've got this. And remember, tomorrow's going to be a better day. Be well.